Growing up in the 1980s, child of the 80s, one of the most fun things that occurred in my life was going out on Sundays, going out shopping with my grandparents, either on my grandmother's usually, my Nina on my mother's side, my Nana on my father's side. And it was usually them. It was one of them that would take me and my oldest sister, Kate. We'd be the ones that would usually go out with them because we were old enough to go off on our own. And those Sundays, those trips out, they usually consisted of getting some sort of a toy somewhere. That was a big selling point. So back then, we didn't have Toys R Us yet on Cape Cod. Back then, we had tons of toys or KB toys in the Cape Cod Mall. And we'd typically have lunch at Friendly's. My favorite was the chicken licking plate, chicken tenders and fries. I mean, that dates me right there what my age was. But then again... I could go for chicken nuggets and fries right now, and I'm in my 40s. One of the places we would go every now and then to go shopping was Bradley's. And I'm sure any one of you listening who's my age, around my age, I'd say mid-30s and above. And if you lived in the Northeast, you should remember Bradley's. Essentially, Bradley's wasn't like job lot. It was kind of like Kmart. I don't want to say it was higher quality than Kmart. I guess maybe when I was a kid, I thought it was higher quality. It was neck and neck on Cape Cod and in the Northeast with places like Woolworth, Jordan Marsh, Sears, and like I said, Kmart. Also in the Northeast, there were places like Caldor and Ames. But rather than wax nostalgic about what it was like for me to go and visit Bradley's, my own experiences... I wanted to give a little bit of its history, give you an idea of why it was so beloved and why it is still so fondly remembered today. It's been over 20 years since Bradley's went out of business, and the origins of the Bradley's department store started in a town called Windsor Locks, Connecticut. And this was when three Connecticut businessmen, Morris Leff, Edward Cuzon, and Isidore Burson, met at Bradley International Airport to discuss the next step in the evolution of discount stores like the old 5 and 10s. Anyone that grew up on Cape Cod will remember Robinson's 5 and 10. There was one in South Yarmouth where I grew up. There were several others on Cape Cod. And I'm sure wherever you all are listening from, you, if you're of that age in your 40s and above, you had a local 5 and dime store. Those of you that are younger, think of it as sort of the precursor to dollar stores that we have today. So these three businessmen, they wanted to evolve that business. Due to the location of where they had the meeting, they decided to call this new store Bradley's. So there's no real big, deep meaning behind the name of the store. It just happened to be the name of the airport where they had this meeting. The first ever Bradley's department store opened its doors on March 14th, 1958, and it was in New London, Connecticut, which is in eastern Connecticut, about 50 miles southwest of Hartford. It was labeled as a modern self-service department store, and so when it first opened, it had to distance itself from other department stores. Basically, it advertised quality, good, and nationally advertised merchandise. Oh, and they would have snack bars at these first ones. And it was a major success. So within a few years, subsequent Bradley stores opened up in Connecticut in Milford, Derby, Hamden, and Bristol, and also West Springfield, Massachusetts. The initial success of Bradley's caught the eye of another up-and-coming business, and that was the Stop and Shop grocery chain. In May 1961, Stop and Shop bought Bradley's from left Kuzon and Burson, the three men that established it. From there on out, Bradley's and Stop and Shop were linked. They were even sometimes in the same strip mall, if possible. For those that grew up on Cape Cod, the first Bradley's that opened on the Cape was in 1965 in Dennisport. That was actually the 31st Bradley's in the chain. For those of you wondering, that location is today Ocean State Job Lot. It's where Upper County Road and Route 28 meet in Dennisport. For those of you not from Cape Cod, that's going to be very specific local addresses that will mean nothing. 
Ironically, my sister Kate that I mentioned earlier when we used to go out shopping with our grandparents when we were kids, she ended up working at that one near the end of when it was open. I don't know if she was there when it closed or not, but I remember picking her up from that location when Bradley's was in its dying days. By 1968, there were 52 Bradley stores in the Northeast, and they generated a revenue of about $139 million annually, which ends up being about $1.24 billion when adjusted to 2024. So they were really successful. They opened up several more stores on Cape Cod, including the one I remember in South Yarmouth, which, like I said, it was in the same strip mall as Stop and Shop. In the early 1970s, Bradley's continued to grow. They opened stores in New Jersey, and it was in that time in the 1970s that the first commercials on television began to introduce people to a character named Mrs. B. She was basically the mascot of Bradley's. She was the smart shopper in the Bradley's ads, and she was portrayed by actress Cynthia Harris. That Mrs. B ad campaign really worked. By the end of the 1970s, Bradley's sales annually had reached about $634 million, which is about $2.69 billion when adjusted to 2024. In 1982, Bradley's stores made up 78% of the Stop and Shop Corporation's total profits, which is crazy to think about when you realize how big the Stop and Shop chain of supermarkets is now, that Bradley's was such a huge part. But even in the 1980s, Stop and Shop was big. But to think that their profits were mostly hinged on Bradley's, thinking about where Bradley's ended up, it's wild. But things were about to change for Bradley's. Bradley's was still growing and was kind of in its heyday in the mid-1980s. And this was when Walmart started to take hold and Kmart had been there for a while, but it began to take a bite out of that discount retailer pie. Even in the mid-1980s, though, with these competitors opening up, Bradley's opened stores in Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, peaking at nearly 170 stores in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. The trouble came, though, when opening these new stores. That, coupled with the impact that Walmart, Kmart, and Target made, started to shrink the Bradley's profit. Too much expansion and too much competition. But the downfall of Bradley's actually started when Stop and Shop became a privately held company in 1988. They acquired massive debt as they arranged a buyout among the shareholders, and this debt forced Bradley's to step back from the expansion they were doing. They had to sell off the leases to 37 stores they had opened down in the mid-Atlantic. In the early 90s, they got rid of the Mrs. B character on TV. They started streamlining. The profits began to slowly rebound. And in 1992, Bradley's broke away from Stop and Shop and became its own company for the first time in 31 years. They even got on the New York Stock Exchange. The new freedom that Bradley's got, though, it ended up becoming their downfall which is ironic that Stop and Shop was kind of helping them. One hand washes the other. So Walmart and Target surpassed Bradley's by the mid-90s, as far as retail stores go. And Bradley's filed for bankruptcy, with more stores closing in 1996. Some of them got converted into Ames department stores, which I mentioned Ames earlier. Bradley's emerged from bankruptcy with 105 stores. And things actually looked up in 1999, when Caldor, who I also mentioned before, another competing department store, closed down. So Bradley's had this kind of brief resurgence, but a second bout of bankruptcy in 2000 proved to be the end. All of the stores began to close, and by the end of 2001, Bradley's was but a memory. I just step back and think how wild it is that it's been over 20 years since Bradley's closed. It was such a big part of my childhood. I'm sure a lot of your childhoods, if you grew up in New England in the Northeast, Bradley's probably held a big place in your childhood too. And if you're younger than that, younger than your mid-30s, Bradley's probably just falls into a category of businesses that failed. But Bradley's was a big deal in its time. I didn't know much about discount retail stores when I was a kid. I just knew it was a fun place that my grandparents would bring me. 
So I think that elevates Bradley's in my eyes as far as my childhood goes. If you're interested in reliving those days, I'm a big fan of doing that. If you go on YouTube, you can find the old commercials of Bradley's back in the 70s and 80s. You can see Mrs. B and see if you remember her. I vaguely do. I remember more of going to Bradley's than seeing advertisements for them. But that's the story of Bradley's, its rise, its fall. Any of you remember going to Bradley's? Did you have those kinds of trips that I've been talking about throughout this video, either with parents or grandparents back in the day, Sunday shopping, toys, get some lunch? Those were always fun, and I miss those days.